Hello people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, how are you doing? It's another episode of This Dev Life and it's nice to have you here with me. Today I have an interesting guest on the show, a very good friend of mine who works for one of the coolest companies on the planet. Uh, if you know this slogan, the company that empowers everyone on the planet to achieve more, you can guess what I can be. Microsoft, yeah. So we got David joining us today to talk all about this day. You know what the show is all about, talking about day life of developers. David, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I think the second time we bought a champ, we tried this a previous time and it <laughs> went so well. God knows what happened. <laughs> but this time we're recording this and... We want to get insight into David's life uh, as a power platform developer. Just, okay, we need to actually talk about what you do at Microsoft. So let's actually get to meet who David Abu is. Who is David? Okay, so my name is David Abu, and I work as um, the global cloud advocate for Power BI um, in Microsoft. I just want people to fall in love with Power BI, use Power BI as their data analytic tool. Um, when they think of visualizations and analytics, I just want them to use Power BI. Um, so that is majorly what I do. So create content, um, videos, speaking engagement, publicity, social media content, anything to make you understand that Power BI can do the things that you want to do and also you can create a career from it. Mm, definitely and i see you're actually doing a good work creating that content i see your youtube videos go out like every monday and i see you open the new tiktok account <laughs> <laughs> to share the knowledge of Sincerely, power yeah, i need to now, look so, that <laughs> 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 so uh one of the purposes of this podcast is to get insights into life of developers now uh when you talk about developers, most people think it's just people that write code from day to day. They're really super duper cool software engineers at Microsoft, at Google, at Facebook, and all that. But no, that's that's not what all developer life is all about. It's all about people who work with tools we use every day. And Power Platform is one of such of the cool tools that I exist in what's there as you. You're a professional in the Power BI field, which is really cool, especially for developers. Well, I don't build a car because you're the expert here. I don't want to crouch into your space to talk about the power platform and to understand what your day generally looks like as someone who preaches the technology of the power platform so from when you wake up to when you sleep what does it look like as a cloud advocate to work at microsoft well you tell us what it feels like to work at microsoft and as a power platform advocate what does it look like working in microsoft um i think the Working in Microsoft gives you um, the, let me call it um, the the scaling ability to do the things you love to do. Um, the if you can reach one person what, in what you do before working at Microsoft can help you reach ten thousand people. So there is a scaling effect into what you do, um, and. Working at Microsoft is beautiful. It's just, it's just, it's just beautiful because we help people do more. We, we help people achieve more uh, with, with our tools, our product. So, and that is what you do. So either you're using Azure, you're using Power Platform, you're using Dynamics 365, you're using Teams, you're using M365, Microsoft 365, you're using Windows 11, um, the Xbox, anything. We just want you to to have fun and we want you to help you to increase productivity, definitely the bottom line of the business and achieve more, achieve more. Just fall in love with what you do because you're using our product in Microsoft. Oh, that sounds like an interesting thing. And I see you actually love the company. Uh, so now working as a power platform advocate, uh, I've, I know a lot of power, I know a lot of cloud advocates, but not so much in the power platform field. Uh, I probably know the developers talking about coding and cloud and DevOps and GitHub and all the nice developer stuff. But what does it, what does the life of a cloud advocate look like? from day to day okay. in Power Platform. In Power Platform. So um, for those who don't understand what, what cloud advocates means, so what we are saying is that we're just doing advocacy. 
advocacy between we stand between the the tech communities and also the let's say the internal product uh, team so so we are saying oh the products so the product team is saying oh we are shipping a new stuff out we are bringing this out we are doing this we are doing this and we go to our tech community and say, oh, through any means, either physical or virtual or social media, and say, oh, this, this is the new stuff that we've added in this product. Check it out. Check it out. Give us reviews. Check it out. So stuff like that. Um, th that is it. Or we come from the product community. Um, the, te um, the tech community tells us that, oh, we love this to have this. We love this product to be able to have this. We love this. Oh, they, I think there's a bug here or stuff like that. And we go back to the product team and say, oh, there's something here. There's something here. Oh, we would love to have this. We would love to have this. And, and, and so we're kind of in between these two things we, we want everything to work we want we want them to understand um that synergy between the two teams the one team is the tech community one team is the product team itself so so if these two groups can get it well then the people love the product more and the tech community are more happy and we just have a very good product and and that is just how it works <laughs> and everybody wins everybody wins <laughs> uh now uh I, I see you put out content on YouTube every Monday, basically. And these things teach how to do this, how to do X, Y, Z, and all that. Is that the only thing you do as a power platform advocate? Or do you do way more than that? Oh, we do way more than that. So um, so content is in, in different form. <laughs> content is in different form. Um, content is in video. We have the video. We have the writing. Um, we have public speaking engagement. Um, we have um, internal reviews of so many things. So th there are so many things that, that is involved. You have. So, um, the, but depending on um, the things that you are trying to do, advocacy is just out there. So people see people see the outside things, which is the the social media stuff that you see. But at the back end, there are so many things at the back end. So many things at the back end. Um, the traveling, you, the traveling, mm -hmm. you have to travel. Um, if you're not traveling, you're speaking online to either international or local communities. Um, you, you submit topics for because you want to speak here, you want to speak here. So the major thing is, yeah, YouTube content is just one part. There's so, so many parts, but you have to write, write. Microsoft Learn is one, one of the biggest uni kind of a university tool that you have different tech products that mm. you can learn from and when you go there you see power platform there and you learn for free and so all those things are content so we have people who wrote so many things from there we have content developers we have so many put everything is there so cloud advocacy has to do with content but the content can come in diverse ways video youtube public speaking engagement then technical writing so you, the, the, those three things, I think, um, have, have their own ways. And so it's just not about just YouTube. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks very much for that clarification. Uh, now, David is a power platform advocate, cloud advocates focusing on power platform at Microsoft. From when he wakes up to when he goes to bed. Well, of course, this changes from day to day, but a typical day for you. What does it look like from sunrise to sunset or somewhere in between? Okay. So I stay in Lagos, Nigeria. And um, my my teammates um, or my colleagues are not Nigerians. So I have different time zones. So mm -hmm. so depending on how you, how it is, yeah, um, I, I can't tell you I work, I work 8 to 5. Nigeria 8 to 5. I won't say I work 8 to 5. Mm. Um, it, 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 most sometimes it goes beyond that because I have meetings and stuff. Um, and it depends on project. So you can have meetings that is more than your time and you just sacrifice because sometimes those on the other hand sacrifice their own time so that they can be in my own time zone too. So it, it's a team game. 
So I, mm. I won't tell you that, oh, my, after 5 p.m., I'm done with my work. Sometimes I might not be done with my work. So what is my day to day like? Um, mm. First things first, uh, after I've done my, my stuff, my morning stuff, the first thing is that uh, I want to check my email, emails first, emails and teams. So is there any emails, any new message and stuff like that? Um, so I, I pick that up. Um, I reply what I need to reply. I check on what I need to check. Depending on any project I want to run, I check them. I say, okay, fine. It's okay, okay, okay. So after that, the next thing is, okay, so what do I want to do today? So let's assume that is my Monday. Since I think we've talked about Monday and YouTube content um, from like 9 o'clock. So I already have a list of topics stored already that I want to talk about. So I just pick one and say, okay, fine. I want to talk about this for today. So I pick that. So I want different aspects of the way people talk about it. Um, people try to go technical, technical, technical. Sometimes I hate going technical, technical, technical because depending on your audience. But since it's, it's sometimes it's YouTube, sometimes it's easy for you to go as low as possible so that people don't get confused on the mm. way. So I try and see, okay, I see different ways people put that topic. And I say, okay, fine. Let me, let me think of the way I'm going to do that. So that can take me an hour one hour 30 minutes just looking just watching videos reading documentations and 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 looking at different ways people are are, are bringing their perspective to it a simple topic of power bear then from there i say okay fine let me think of the way i want to come in so i type right and think of okay i'll go in from here from here from here that is already going to 11 o'clock and i say okay shoot, time time to shoot i bring him mm-hmm my software out, open it and say, okay, fine. Then get the data I need and then I start recording. I my record up to five times, six times. So when you see my YouTube channel, it might be the sixth one that you're actually seeing. Not the first, not the second, not the third. So sometimes I'll have, I'll have published and I'll see mistake. I'll bring it out back. I was in delete it upload another one again so sometimes mm. it, it, it takes it takes a whole lot so before i'm done you are seeing 1 p.m already then that is when i get my first food for the day so i, I go and eat come back then around that time is when i'm beginning to have meetings because i have meetings around from three four i think that is when it's become morning in seattle washington so i begin to have meetings and from there till five so meetings here and there if i need to talk to somebody and stuff like that around the time so within 3 p.m to 5 5 30 i'm going to have meetings joining meetings and stuff like that so most of the time that is for me on monday the monday is always learning recording 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 you know, sometimes people ask, oh, why can't you just record on Sunday and I'm put it out on Monday? But my Sunday is stressful too. Yeah, sincerely, my Sunday is stressful. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I try to sleep a lot. So I just say, you okay, down, let me sleep. My Monday, I'll focus on my Monday. So my Monday is my Monday. So for me, that is it. If it is mm-hmm. not a day I'm doing my YouTube, then... It's going to be a whole lot of meetings, brainstorming sessions with maybe a friend of mine, a colleague, or I'm thinking of the way to, to make sure that the Power BI stuff goes goes uh, goes out publicly and stuff like that. So if you follow me majorly on my on my YouTube or I mean on my on my LinkedIn or or my Twitter, and do you understand? I'm thinking of ways to make sure, oh, power BI, power BI, power BI. So so that is just how it works. Wow, that's a quite packed day. And I like the fact that you actually set a particular day where you do content creation. And I think it helps productivity in a way because you know this is the day I'm doing this. Any other day, I'm 
if I think of it, I'll write it down. I'll do it on a Monday. And that kind of brings a rhythm to your flow. And the other day is brainstorming. Now, we've got insight into what your daily life looks like. And I like the fact that you actually have your meetings towards the end of day for you, which I'm a bit jealous of <laughs> uh, because your mornings are just to be productive, like get in the game. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm jealous of that. Just a little tiny bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks very much for all that. Now, people might be asking, um, how did you get started in your journey to being a cloud advocate, what was the path like? Well, it doesn't have to be like a do this, do this, do that. What was what was it like for you becoming a cloud advocate from when you started your career journey? Okay, so so cloud advocate. See, I just want to become a data analyst. Simple. Yeah, I, I just want to become a data analyst. Yeah. See, I tell people. I said, see. Career is, is a long road. Sometimes you just don't know. It's something just come up. No, I, I don't think I, I wrote it in a place that I want to become a cloud advocate. You know, I didn't. So I, I'm just a data analyst. I really wanted to work as a data analyst. But, but, but if there is one thing that differentiates me with other data analysts is my ability to, to help people. And that is community work. I love community work. So community work, which is building communities, is one of the things that separates me with a normal data analyst. A, a data analyst is just Power BI, SQL, Python, finish. I close my laptop, I'm gone for the day. That is it. But when you leave that, the other side of David you want to see is community. I love community. I love posting things online. I love just doing community work. I just love talking about it. I love talking about my work. I love I love saying, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's just it. And everybody just understand that, oh, David is doing this. David is doing that. It's just simple. So, so it, it makes you understand, oh, this is what David is. David is outside Power BI. This is what David does. David does. David loves plantain. It's just, you just understand it on a way. And after that, then you just say, okay, fine. Now, the community work now gave me more opportunities. I became MVP in Microsoft. That was even before I joined Microsoft. I became MVP, most valuable professional in data platform. After that, then Cloud Advocate comes into place and everything became Cloud Advocate. So there is no pathway, but if you want to become a Cloud Advocate, just know that it has to do with community. Community is a community work type of role is because people know you in that community. People respect you or people people see you as somebody that, oh, when it comes to Power BI, when it comes to this, just please talk to David. He understands many of these things. So community first, then technicality, um, your technicality, stuff like that. Then And most one thing about Cloud Advocates is that nobody says that you, can, you have to be a technical expert. You no, know, you, 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 I'm not saying you shouldn't strive to be an expert, but it's not it's not a, a prerequisite that you have to be 20 years experience in Power BI or 20 years in no no no. Cloud advocate is do you know this product well enough to talk about it? Do you know this product well enough to make people fall in love about it? Do you know this product enough to be able to teach people about it? If you can combine teaching, combine technical writing, combine the passion of learning for it, cloud advocacy is, is you already have it already. There you have it, friends, from the horse's mouth. Become community delivering with whatever you do. If you're learning to code, Teach someone about it. You're learning Python. Teach someone about it. You're learning Power BI. Teach someone you're learning PowerPoint or Notepad or whatever thing you're trying to do. Teach someone about it. And who knows? You might just get that opportunity. But I think the core of it is trying to help others. Yeah. And that kind of shines a light on who you are. And that makes you non-essential because, well, joining Microsoft is a choice uh, that some people would not take. Uh, and for you, I think it's nice that we have someone who is community driven, also joining a company that tries to make impact in the field. And then it just improve, increases your reach to a wider range of audiences, like just boom, just like you said, uh, reaching one to reaching 10,000. And that is that force that being a cloud advocate can give you in whatever thing you do. 
and we have lots of cloud advocates at Microsoft. We have people who specialize in code, Microsoft Graph, Azure, .NET, you name it. There's just a whole bunch of them doing amazing things in the world today, which I think it's really, really super duper cool, like I always say. <laughs> All right, so that is that is David's life. Well, for now, while he's a cloud advocate at Microsoft, it's typical day, essentially, or doesn't exactly follow that format, but mostly that format of the day. And I think the question that comes to mind, which I ask every guest that comes on the show, well, on this particular kind of segment is, working from day to day is exciting to love the job you do. You love your job, you talk all about it, but sometimes there comes challenges. It could be people oriented, it could be time, it could be technical, it could be pretty much anything. Can you point maybe one or two of those challenges that you face from day to day and how you try to overcome them as a cloud advocate? Okay, so um, I will let's say this is a challenge. I think maybe the challenge of learning because you have to keep learning, like like you have to watch videos on how to learn Cartesia to be able to record. You have to watch videos on on how to edit. You have to watch videos on some things that you just have to watch videos. You have to just keep learning, like Power BI too. Some people just ask you a question and you have to like, oh, okay. Um, okay how do i do this how do i do this so um your willingness to learn sometimes you can be a challenge sometimes you're just like okay you're like i'm tired but but it's just you knowing that you're helping a whole lot of people you're helping the world you're helping you're helping so many people at large so so it's, it's important that you understand that the learning the learning every day is is so that you can help other people uh, and and that is one key thing. So it might be a challenge, but it's something that if you understand why you're doing what you're doing, then every other thing becomes cool. Another challenge might be uh, public speaking engagement. You talk a lot, like you just talk a lot, like uh, <laughs> like between now, between um, when I started till now. I think I've, I'm just having more speaking engagement, more speaking engagement. And I will keep having them. So you keep talking. Yeah. So if you are somebody that don't love talking that much, I don't think cloud advocacy is for you. Uh, I'm not sure because you have to talk. You, you must not be shy of camera. Yeah. I, I think it was even one of the prerequisites that you must not be shy of the camera. You must just not be shy of the camera. So <laughs> it's one of the things. So you just have to love to talk. You have to love to share. Um, for me now, I'm I'm introvert. People don't believe. I I prefer staying on my own. I prefer indoor things for me. So the the only thing that brings me out is when I know that oh okay I have to do a public speaking engagement. That's just the only thing. Apart from that, every other time I'm in my room. I just stay. So, but it, it, it makes me understand that from my job, this is what I love to do. I love to help people. So, if I would need to be out there to help people, then why not? I, I do that. Another of um, challenging cloud advocacy um, is traveling. So, you travel a lot. Um, if you watch any YouTube video, um, you definitely know that any YouTube video on cloud advocacy, what are the things they do? They meet with tech communities and they travel, they move. So because of COVID, definitely it's on the low, um, but it's one of them. So me, I'm currently running a project that requires me to travel. And so I'm currently on the road uh, most of the time. So uh, so you try as possible to take rest so that it doesn't just get to you mentally. So you rest and, and I love Microsoft. Microsoft tells you that you, know, you take take the time so is is you you need to just find a balance um to it if you can find a balance i think every other thing can work so i think those those things i've just listed now there are challenges but um you find a way to 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 um to balance it to overcome those challenge yeah, yeah to balance overcome and, and that is just it so that is how, how it is wow, wow 
Thanks very much for those great insights. Now we know what Microsoft is really feel like working at their daily jobs, uh, especially as a cloud advocate. I've uh, brought on software engineers, brought on now a cloud advocate. Probably I'll bring an engineering director up next to talk about what it feels like to be an engineering director at Microsoft. But thanks very much, David, for coming on the show. We appreciate this a lot. And I will drop the links to follow him. So if you have questions about Power BI, go ask him. Is the guy to go to. So I'll drop it to that and do this LinkedIn profile uh, and any special links you might want to reach him on to ask your questions. So be sure to follow him and also go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He shares lots of really super duper cool content every Monday. So be sure to check those content out. So subscribe to his channel, of course. You know, subscribe to my own too <laughs> if you have not done that yet. Yeah, All right, people. Definitely. <laughs> right okay so uh thanks for coming and thanks for listening our uh, dear listeners on the show today we now say it till i come your way again with another guest on the show and on this dev life i'll say stay safe and goodbye <laughs>